A 50-year-old female came for a routine eye checkup. She has been wearing glasses since the age of 10 years. At the age of 4 months, her mother noticed some intermittent squint and took her for an eye checkup where the ophthalmologist told her that the retina had some changes but not to worry. Her father is a known case of primary open angle glaucoma. Five years back, she was told her fundus had some changes, but intraocular pressure was normal and the field changes were non glaucomatous. She is currently not on any topical medications apart from occasional artificial tears for dry eye. On examination, her vision was 6 6 with minus 8 diopter correction in both eyes and N6 with a plus 2 reading add. Uh, rest of anterior segment was normal in both eyes. Intraocular pressures were 19 in uh, both eyes by Goldman Applination Tonometry. This was the fundus picture. This is the visual field performed uh, at the present visit, the fields are identical to those performed 5 years ago. The field defects are absent when perimetry is performed with the myopic correction in place. So what are we dealing with here and what needs to be done? We have a 50 year old female with a family history of glaucoma who came in for a routine checkup. She is a high myope with good corrected vision, normal intraocular pressure and with fundus and field changes. What we see here is a vertically oval disc that is rotated inferonasally. Superotemporal portion of the disc appears elevated with slightly blurred margins and inferon nasal crescent of parapapillary atrophy, retinal vessels that run nasally after emerging before turning and running temporarily. In addition, the inferonasal quadrants are hypopigmented. The fields show bilateral relative superotemporal defects not respecting the midline. This condition is most typical for that of tilted disc with situs inversus. Other conditions in the differential diagnosis are acquired myopic crescents, segmental hypoplasia of the optic nerve, disc edema, neoplasias of the optic nerve and optic nerve head, chiasmal lesions and glaucoma. Points in favor of a tilted disc are the classic fundus features, presence of situs inversus and myopia which are known to be commonly associated. Of course, astigmatism is also a known association, however, our patient does not have any astigmatism. The non-progressive superotemporal field effects that disappear with myopic correction are also classic features of tilted discs. So all these features combined with the history of being told that there was a retinal abnormality at infancy even before the myopia developed are strongly in favor of congenital tilted discs. Uh, acquired myopic crescents can resemble tilted discs and the situation is compounded by the fact that most patients with a tilted disc have myopia. Typically myopic crescents are seen temporarily in 80% of cases. Uh, whereas the crescents of tilted discs are inferior nasal in about 65% of cases. The most important feature of acquired myopic crescents is that they increase with time, whereas the crescents of tilted discs are stationary. The picture here shows the disc of a 10 year old. Two years previously, this was the appearance of her disc. The authors who reported this case believe that the disc doesn't really get tilted in myopia but there is a nasal shifting of the temporal disc border that gives the appearance of a tilt. Regardless of the reason, a myopic disc can mimic a tilted disc and the only factor that can conclusively differentiate the two is the progression of the myopic crescent with time. Uh, segmental hypoplasia can simulate a tilted disc due to the asymmetric loss of axons which occur due to intrauterine insult to a part of the visual system. A relevant history may help. However, an MRI is usually needed to localize the site of primary injury along the visual pathway. 
as one edge of the tilted disc is elevated in some cases differentiation from disc edema due to any cause or pseudopapilledema may be challenging the main differentiation would be in the associated symptoms and signs for example pain on eye movements in optic neuritis rapid diminution of vision and uh, rapd in optic neuritis and anterior ischemic optic neuropathy other findings could indicate the presence of a true papilledema Optic nerve gliomas and optic nerve sheath meningiomas can uh, sometimes mimic a tilted disc when there is asymmetry. Additional features such as proptosis, motility defects, visual loss and field changes uh, different from those of tilted discs can provide clues. Of course, new neuroimaging will help. As in our case, the temporal field defects can mimic a chiasmal lesion and can mimic a unilateral temporal hemianopia or a bitemporal hemianopia of chiasmal lesions. One important point is that in tilted discs, the field doesn't respect the uh, vertical midline. And even though this is generally true, occasionally the fields of even tilted discs do respect the midline and neuroimaging is required for differentiation in such cases though there is no association between tilted discs and the susceptibility to glaucoma assessing for glaucoma in a patient with a tilted disc can be challenging our patient is a typical example more so since she has a family history of glaucoma both conditions have some commonalities such as association with myopia vertically oval disc and peripapillary atrophy because of the intrinsic distortions in tilted discs assessment for focal notching cup size nasal displacement of vessels and neuroretinal rim is difficult the early field effects of tilted discs can mimic those due to early glaucoma. Partial or complete disappearance of the field effects with myopic correction, as in our case, suggests tilted discs. Glaucomatous defects respect the horizontal midline and of course, progression of fields is diagnostic of glaucoma. Our patient has a normal intraocular pressure, stable fields for the past 5 years that disappear with myopic correction. So it is safe to say that at present there is no evidence of glaucoma. In doubtful cases, ancillary tests may be required. MRI is the most useful as it shows the oblique insertion of the optic nerve into the globe and helps in ruling out other pathology. Electrophysiologic testing, reduction in amplitude of B wave is seen in both scotopic and photopic ERG. Some studies have found a reduction in mean response amplitude density in the foveal and parafoveal areas, indicating macular involvement in tilted disc syndrome. Abnormal EOG and abnormal latency delay on pattern reversal VEP is also seen. If you like this video, you may show your appreciation by making a small contribution to help support the channel. Here below the video window, click on Super Thanks. Choose the amount you would like to contribute and then click Buy and Send to complete the transaction. Thank you.